Uh huh. So, a pneumatic suite. Oh wow. For offlining. Well, no, for us this was this was when BBC Film Department first realised that we could start using video. It was a suite exactly like this, and it was pneumatic SP, pneumatic SP high band pneumatic, and obviously the end result would be transmitted. Mm. Um, and this is exactly, exactly the, uh, and it is, it's an 800. Yeah, well, I is, had a smaller one, which uh, is RM440, the, which, is, which was a lot smaller, and you would, it sort of cut off about there, really, but, but it without was, the keyboard. But it was a, a cut-down version yeah. of, of this, as it were. Yeah. Yes, well, we needed the keyboard because, well, at the end, when we would have edited over generations to generation, we had to conform, and we had to then start to type yeah. time codes in anyway, but that's this thing. Yes, and it could control two, two players. Yeah, the t tape's not in. Right, let's, Put it in. let's see what happens here. One is, they're both recorders, but one is, let's see what happens. These are bigger than, yeah. you know, they were smaller ones, weren't they? Now, yeah, um, these are the ones, these are <coughs> the ones. Here we go. Could you do effects? Because there's a, a mixer there um, on this. We, you, if you had a, a, a switcher connector or a mixer connected, yes, but we didn't have one in, in when I first when I first started. We didn't start to get those until we went over to ah online. So I, I did all my offlines because mm -hmm. I would only do offlines on the RM440 mm -hmm. and the two machines, and then log it all up, then right. take it to a, an outside facilities house for onlining. Right. And so you do your edit, and then you run through. Or as you're going along, you'd log, log all mm. the ins and outs and where the sound was coming from and uh, have everything prepared for when you go for the online. But you're saying you did it here? We, this, this was our beginning to end machine uh -huh. with, with these when we, when we first started. And it, this stayed until eventually, which we, we, I can see over there, we have a Betacam SP suite. And, and when we moved over to the Betacams, that's when they gave us one of these 900s. And Although that, this is, that is actually looks a lot more like the 440, yeah. doesn't this it? Is, this is actually a 910. Yours. This is, I've got to be honest, I, I, I hated this because it wasn't what I called an editor's tool. This, because it had the shut, two shuttle and jogs, I could independently yes. control yeah, the player. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But also, what was, what was to me was very important was this ability on the shuttle and jog on the shuttle, I could set it up so that it could go backwards at normal speed. And just like on a steam beck, I could play backwards and forwards and find my in and out very, very quickly. Whereas with that single type of controller, I had a lot of trouble. So does this, will this go backwards at normal speed? I can set it up. So if you get it on play, play. And then you want to go backwards. Hit, I would hit, have just... hit, hit, hit the search. Well, I you didn't need to do that. You could just use the shuttle, couldn't no, you? No, but then, it's, then it goes into a different speed, you see. Oh, I, see. I could set it up so that if you've got the right re reverse speed, yeah. it's about there, I think. See, it's a bit too slow still. Yeah. There we go. And I could find my in point and out mm. point very quickly by playing. Yes, I want to go back just a little bit. Stop there. Edit, mark in. Now I have to remember. How the heck? So you've got to choose ah. your video or an yeah. audio source. Or audio so you choose show. the source. In this case, it will be a VTR. Yeah. Um, we'd also and have then to choose there. whether we're doing an assemble, which you yeah. would not. You only do at the beginning if you're black and bursting, or the insert. So basically, those would be set, and it depends on how many audio channels or whether you were not doing any audio at the time. You would select the relative, or you're doing audio only. If you're doing a bit of voiceover or whatever, and then so in let's see. There. So ah, now that's why isn't so. Hang on, I haven't got anything up in the source. So Doesn't matter. It should be able to set the recorder in. Why won't it let me? I've got that. Got that. And there. How come this doesn't? 
This is coming up on both monitors. Because it's automatically, it's automatically feeding through. Um, if I press play there, then if I press play there, it wouldn't uh -huh. come through then. But so why can't I mark an in? While you're doing that, I found that as a little trick is if you found where it'd be on your source really, if you found the frame you liked on your source, which I can't get that to steady, but let's, let's, let's say that's a source and it's on a still frame. Yes. If you unplugged the uh, controller on the back of the source machine, you could do a freeze frame. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, we were, and people would say, have you done, done we freeze frame all, without we an effect? We were all into tricks on how to, how, to, how to do a kind of a freeze frame with, yeah. without the proper machines. I think lucky enough we had the, um, the um, vibrating playback heads, so we actually could yes. on, on the machines that, that, that we had. Not, I can't remember. I know when we came to the Betacam SP, we could certainly do freeze frames, but I can't remember. You yeah, know, but that's how I, fa I found yeah. out how to do it on the, on the controller that I had. So but. Error, that's fine. So let's, let's put a in. Hmm. I can't, so can I put a player in? I can't get it to search. Is it? It's got time code. Oh, maybe it didn't start to. There we go. Hey. Still breaking up a bit, mm. isn't it? Because the other thing about offline editing was to be well organised, uh, which coming from a film background, we both were well organised. Yes. The cutting room was. That's. I that's mean, that it. was that was one of the issues when we moved to video. Film being obviously an, an, a non-linear format, you, you you could just start throwing shots together without the, the the fear of well that's too long and that's too short I can easily trim it. But with this, because it was a linear system, you know, you put a shot down, you put the next shot down, you put the next shot down. And I found that you had to be a little bit more disciplined and try and get it right. With a film? Bit more, with, 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 with tape. With tape. A little oh, bit more right first time. Otherwise, you're going to have to go another generation. Well, you go another you generation, but you could, the thing is, you could do preview. Yes. So you could do preview oh, yes. and see whether you read it was okay. Yes, but it's a but whole if you kept messing about with film, in the end you had so many joins no comment. that it just all jumped no and you there couldn't were, see there anything. Were, there, were, there were drawbacks. But what I'm talking about is if, you, <coughs> if, you want, if you're going to do a whole sequence, not just one edit, you know, you yeah, might, yeah, uh, yeah, sort yeah. Of you've got a whole sequence of shots together and you kind of think, uh, that's too long. Well, I'll have to wait till next time till we do another yes. generation. To an, because when I used to work on Panorama, we get up to nine generations. Um, and then eventually we'd have to conform that. Yes. And uh, that would certainly... Uh, produce its issues because I'm not sure when we we'll start talking about the way the actual process that we did which we had we had on that when we had to go we would go through about nine generations and then at the end we take that final copy and have to go through and re-edit on top first what sort of generation did you, did you have you know coming in from the cameras it was mainly at first it was in time first, how many you oh, know, lots of hopefully Hopefully under 20, hopefully under 24 rolls. And there is a reason for that, because we used to identify yeah. on the rushes yes. oh, well, the roll number onwards. by set yeah. the cameraman would set yeah. the hours. Yeah. So of course you've got from zero to 23. Yeah. So, um, but of course, on top of that, obviously when you worked on some really big productions, and I did a work, uh, there was one on Afghanistan which they had so many tapes. It was, there was more hours of footage then I was allocated editing time overall. Um, you could then use the user bits, that's the other yeah. half of, of the or time code. Or time of day. Yeah. Um, we never used time of day, but sometimes the cameraman would also, as a double check, set the other half time code, they'd actually set the roll number in the user bits. Yeah. So of course, if you yeah. went over roll 23, yeah. then that was really useful. And I think a lot of people going from, going straight to, to non-linear didn't, I think, in my, in my experience, they didn't grasp the need oh, no. to be well organised. No. And so, for me, moving from offline to online, you had to know exactly which role it's coming from. Yes. You couldn't have all the rows, roles with the same identification, otherwise oh, you were completely lost. No. And so if you could control the cameraman, you'd ask him to start, as you said, at 01, and then in numerical order, 
but when you were doing your log, you had to make sure you told them which role it's coming right. from. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, there was, the, I'd say the worst I ever did was this program on Afghanistan, which they'd been shooting mm -hmm. with John Simpson over a number of years. They mm -hmm. took, they took John Simpson, he crossed into Afghanistan with the Mujahideen over the mountains and then got back out again and then went in officially in a normal plane, etc. And they had tapes, they had hi eights, they had SVHSs, they had different type of beaters. Material had been shot by freelance ex-military camera, ex-military guys, you know, working, yes. going in with the Mujahideen separately. And I had rows and rows of these tapes. And I remember obviously trying to get all those roll numbered. They were yeah. not sorted out properly in the first place. And I remember phoning the director in the middle of the night. Can you remember where this shot came from? Which roll of the tape? Just out of interest. Now let's just check again. Why? <coughs> now, that? That's coming through on both. Yes, because it's, that's gone into pause. Oh. The recorder's gone into a pause mode. So, now see, I can set a player in, but what I can't do is set a recorder in. There's a do a preview. Can you do it? Mark in and out and do a preview. It's just complaining. Well, the point is, if I press preview, well, where's that going to go? No, it's, it's kind of acts. No, it's coming up with an error yeah. message. And of course, the other thing to, to remember is pre-roll. Mm -hmm. So on 10. you couldn't start from the beginning of the shot because the camera oh, would absolutely. have got up to speed. Yep. So you had to have pre-roll. And when you did edit, it would go back and then come forward and then go in. So you had to yeah. have pre-roll time then. Yes, you had to. Oh. It wasn't too bad with the when. When, there was, when the cameras were set up correctly, obviously at the beginning of the tape there'd be a problem, but mm. if they'd set it up and they were using rec run time code, you could go back over the end of the previous shot. Well, that's sad that we can't get that to, but I presume we can get... So we can set player, it, player in and out. It's not going to show us the in and out time. Oh, yes. Yep, in and out time, 17 seconds. I managed to set an in and out time. But I can't set a... So can you do an, an in on the record No, side? it won't let me. It won't let me. It's just not... So we're there at 12 hours, whatever. Hold the entry button down, press the in, and it's... See, that should now... That should now light up. Let's now see... Maybe it's the LED. It's no, not running. It's not coming it? up with an error. No. It's not coming up with a whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, Does it matter? These are on control rather than time code. No, I still can't no. set an. I still can't set a recorder in. Let's go back to. Go to okay. I'm not reading up there now. Hang on, we've got uh, that. Director, we drumming on the desk by now. Yes. So there we go. Anyway, I can't seem to do an edit with it, but... So anyway, <clears throat> when we were working on, and we were going to nine generations, we then had to reconform it at the end. Onto what? We would actually go back onto a, one of the, the final copies, say, you, or we'd make a copy of the final one because we'd use that for also track laying. Well, so, onto beta so, or mm, onto, back onto pneumatic? We were still working on pneumatic. Right. Um, and what we had to do, we had to use this vertical interval time code. Yeah. That, you know, on the original rushes in those blank lines at the top of the picture, you'd have the, uh, an exact copy of the, the normal time code. 
and that would get carried across through all the edited generations. And so we'd have to wind through to each edit. To each edit on so you couldn't the, do an auto-conform though? No, if you were going to an online, what we'd have to do, you'd do an auto-conform? No, we'd have to, what we would actually do <laughs> is actually do it on here. We'd have to, we had a separate little reader up here, yeah. which could read off the recorder the original player yeah. vertical interval time code. So you're making we'd every have, edit again? We'd have to go every by edit by hand. Oh. And then this, was, this is when we first went, oh, this is when we first started using um, you know, a tape system. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to then. Why not? To, why not dump it down onto because via onto beta and then do an auto. We didn't have beta. Ah. It wasn't the master. Would it be umatic as well? Was it? Yes. The, so, we the, had, so we had umatic tapes. Yeah, yeah. For, yes. From the camera and a umatic tape that we were to right. recording okay. onto. This was, I mean, it didn't last long. We then went over to beta, but we still had to conform at the end. We still yeah. had to use this you know, to each edit and typing in the time code that we could read off the reader that would yeah. be here and putting it into the player. And we also had to choose the roll number, put the right roll in, because we could read the roll from the, as I say, the hours. And then we'd have to remake each edit. But what you would actually do, you'd actually set up a few edits, as it were, um, and, and store them, because you just you go through a process. First yeah. of all, I'll just go through and do some typing in, do that edit, then that edit, then that edit, then that edit. Then I'd sit back and just say, right, conform from edit number whatever it was you'd started right. to whatever edit like you just finished on so you would just sit back and then do a bit of an right. auto conform um, but yes and of course one of the other problems was I think on these you could only store 128 edits as a hundred 128 edits um, no it was a slow it was an overnight yeah. process it was not not I think the time we, when we went all beta SP mm -hmm. we had to have one of these edit controllers yeah which the main advantage I could see was I think now it could handle a thousand edits or something, but instead of now having the nice, well, relatively nice LED readouts, now yeah, that's the, edit the information list, isn't is it? actually yeah. produced on a, on a, on a monitor, which yes. I'm sure it made it easier for Sony, Sony to make and perhaps cheaper because you didn't have to have you know, extra built-in electronics here and this is stuff you could alter. Um, but Let's say so you had to choose. Where did you have to choose? Let's say it. So that's. Is there anything? Is there tapes? There we go. You'd have different colours on that monitor, couldn't you? Um, you know, mm, for the for the numbers, you can. So it was easier to spot. I think, but that's probably only a black only, and white. Well, monitor. only yeah, it was yeah. green or something. It wasn't fancy. So, so that's the recorder. So now let's. Shoot. We've got a tape in there. Right. Let's just play it on. Joke. Yeah, that's no, right. I'm sorry. Oh, right. I, I'm, I control it. It's, oh, hang on, it's player two. That's player two. Sorry, I was on the wrong player. Right. So instead of having the two knobs, you've only got one knob and yeah. you have to select, select whatever you want to play. And the other problem was if you went to shuttle, it didn't move because you can't set up a speed. Yeah. So I couldn't do this play forwards, shuttle backwards by just going between these two buttons. It just it wouldn't do anything and it as i said sadly it did drive me a bit mad at first but you weren't uh, doing offlines on this were you this well, was for online we, only yes finishing. but we were we were doing a whole program we weren't finishing no we were actually editing the program and then at the end doing the on so we were we were offlining in a sense of going multiple generations and then on the same machine we would then go through and conform on it we would do exactly as i said reading reading the vitsi and we would repaint every picture over the recorded tape. There, there's, um, Whereas I'd take a, a disc. I, right, from that, I'd take a floppy disc with an yeah. EDL, we, we had a, hand it in, and then come back in a few hours' I time. Think, and you just heard the machines going, mm, mm, there doing was, the edit. In, in, other, in, in other areas of the BBC where they were using VHS offline, which is the first offline system they really started to use, then yes, yes. of course, you'd, have into, you'd get into that. Um, 
but no, in the, where we were using sweets like this, those of us who are I think, perhaps fortunate enough or unfortunate enough, because I, like I like the quality of being able to work with original tapes, and that, those VHS, yeah. I mean, oh, I VHS only did a couple of stories on VHS offline, and yeah. oh Lord. In fact, I do remember when I was asked to originally assess a system that had come in, a JVC system, and I had done a pilot, a, a pilot program with a director I worked with quite a lot, and I said, look, I can get you some free editing if we will try this VHS offline suite they've just got set up on test. And I remember, so I sort of you know, worked out how to use it, etc. and I started to do some edits, and then I went to Generation, did another one, and I said, what do you think of that? I said to the director, he said, it's fine, but I wish I could actually see the picture. Mm. It was so fuzzy. I really... Yeah, was, I know, VHS I know they got awful. it better when SVHS came in, it was, But it was but a budget thing when yeah. I was doing it. Um, anyway. I made a mistake there, actually, is that yeah. uh, only in later offlines could you produce an EDL, and that was if the... Um, I think it was called Shot Lister or Shot Lock. Oh, yes, yes, there were very... And you had to do your edit and then press a button and edit, and enter it, do your edit, enter. Um, but when I first started doing the offline, you made a hand log and you sat there with the online editor and he read the numbers or you gave him the numbers and it was, it was quite laborious to go through. Mm -hmm. And that's where you would make any uh, fine adjustments or say to him, I want an effect to put mm -hmm. in here, you've got to dissolve to this or whatever, a title's going to go in here, etc., etc. Uh, I just mentioned this whole business about we would go nine generations, say, mm. and then at the end we would then have to go and paint back and er the original rushes over each shot. This particular edit controller, this is the 910, this is the second generation of the 900, and when I was working up in Lime Grove and we're on Panorama, the engineers came to me and said, Rob, we've got a problem down in the late show. Um, they're just getting whole new suites, lucky so-and-sos, um, and they're getting Grass Valley mixers. But we have a problem interfacing the new 910s they're getting with the Grass Valley, something or other. Would you mind terribly if we took your old 900 from you in your edit suite and put a 910 in temporarily? It's exactly the same, they said. It won't make... I said, yeah, sure thing, that's okay, I don't mind. And then I'd heard something about the 910, that this has macros. I, you can set up a whole chain of events dependent on which function key you pressed. And I got the, I, there was a manual with it and I got it out and I realized, I started playing and I started trying to write some macros that this whole business of us, of us having to, on the ninth generation, going back to each edit, reading the Vitsi, typing in the number into the, the player in, etc., etc. You could automate this with a macro because this, this machine could interrogate the machine and read the Vitsi from the machine and automatically put it into the player in. It could then move forward a frame, set the recorder in for the next edit. This was, this was suddenly, it became a wonderful machine. Apart from, you know, so I still didn't like it shuttle and jog. And I'm afraid I turned round to the powers that be. I said, look, you know on Panorama, etc., we always end up working the whole weekend, night and day. This 910 means that we can be much, much more productive at the end. We don't have to sit there with our eyes trying to read time codes, etc. You can just press a button and it does it for you. You can just whiz through, press a button, whiz through, press a button. I said, you can't take it from me. You cannot take this from me. <laughs> and I won. The engineer said, you're a bugger because you've really sodded up but they've had to agree on high up, yes, you are going to keep a 910 and just in one of your suites so that whoever has come to the end of their program can come in, use this, and just run through it and use the macros. Mm. And that's how we survived until the magical QDOS, which is a whole other story when suddenly all of these issues we had with conforming and producing EDLs, etc. Yeah. As I say, when so we did have this, 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 this strange process, starting on that, Umatics, mm. then we moved over to the beta SPs, and I say we were given the edit controller from what I called hell at the time, but, but then it redeemed itself by, in the end, having these wonderful macros, which did speed us up. I think yeah. I went down a different route, really. We did, we did. that's the whole point, exactly. Yeah. We're, and I say, in other areas of the BBC, <laughs> there were people who were having to use VHS offline, there were people having to use Umatic offlines. In the end, when, when 
the, the arrival of this particular system called QDOS, which was this logging system externally to what's going on actually in the Sony controller. That's when my department, film department, decided that VHS, we'd stop using VHS edit suites and they would all become pneumatic edit suites. Yeah. Because it's just... Well, it's so much easier, but if I was working for a mean producer, mm -hmm. it had to be VHS. If you're working on a 15-minute documentary, you're yeah. going to go many generations, and you can't go yeah. many generations on VHS, and people were having to do conforms part the way through just yeah. to make it visible. Um, I wasn't on particularly long programmes, though. We, um, and I think also, I mean, your film and I'm film, we were more used to getting an edit right more or less first time. Second time, yes. It's the only the only reason you went down generations was if the client or the director kept came in well, and started making lots of changes, which they did. Which yeah, yes, they tended yes, to. But then when they realised it was going to cost a lot more money to yeah. finish it, mm. suddenly oh no, that shot's do mm. fine. That will do. Uh, mm. when I worked on Manorama, time was no object. They would. Yeah, well, and it was it, different because we let's were face it, one of the things sometimes, I mean, we're editors and we create something, but sometimes I think we get to a stage when we're compressors. It's always too long. I mean, it's, what can we cut out? What can we cut out? Yeah, what can we cut yeah. out? How can we get it down to our 40 minutes or our 50 minutes or our 10 minutes or whatever? And, and that's when you have to start going generations as well. Um, but I'd say eight or nine generations was not unusual yeah, for... I was lucky I never got to that. Yes. But, uh, I think it was horses for courses. If you're doing short stories like they were on Nationwide, then, then they wouldn't. In fact, they would try and keep it down to two or three generations. So what you've edited is still fit for transmission without yes. having to reconform. Yes. But, but in our case, no. In fact, when I used to go and edit, when I would edit panoramas on location, when I went to Hong Kong and uh, when the wall came down, they shot, sent me over to, 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 to East Berlin and the, the Romanian Revolution, then you were producing a 40, 50 minute programme and you had to watch the general, because there is no way mm. we, I was going to have time on location to start reconforming. So yes, what, you were what I was editing is what was going to get eventually satellited back, yeah, back no, to I the Yeah, and I didn't UK. have that. As it, um, and the online suites you went to that were outside facilities that you were renting by the hour, I know this is for demonstration, but they were huge mixing oh, Lord, desk, yes, yes, yes. Uh, with your controllers, that, your monitors, the yeah, sound. A much more fancy switcher than that. Oh, huge. Yeah. Uh, Aston caption generators, Quantel effects, um, Rostrum cameras feeding in, everything. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, sort of the, three times the size oh, I know. of there. Anyway, I'm, I'm really glad they managed to recreate mm. the, two, mm. the, t the, the two situations that I was involved in, in, in the evolution, um, until, we get, until, we, until we got to the final avid type light works non-linear. And as I say, it's sad that, that in the end it became quite viable with what we used as this QDOS system when you had this extra logging. But uh, I, I had a real love relationship <coughs> with that. When they, as I mentioned, when they introduced this in, 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 into my situation, and I say I, I found I became less productive. I, I couldn't edit because I couldn't move as fast because I had to whittle around with this knob and it was always shoot off somewhere. And I remember there was one little suite left up at the end of, of the corridor where I was working in the top of Lime Grove. And uh, in, the, in the evening when whoever used that suite went home, I would right, I'm going to go and cut the next sequence down on this. And I'm going to do it much, much quicker because I, um, until eventually that was taken away. But I got used to it. The, the solution for me with this was quite simple, not to use this little horrible thing, but this, the shuttle and jogs on here, are a virtual mimic of this. And I can set these up. Instead of well, you could edit without, the, the, without this anyway, couldn't yeah. you? Because this had all the selection and in and outs and yes, anyway. Yes, but... <coughs> but you can actually because you can choose here and do the in and outs there. How do I? Get, I forgot how to shut. So every run, 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 I know I've, I'd actually would start using the front panel, so I'd, I'd have, because our machines would be here, mm -hmm. so I'd actually find, when I'm trying to find somewhere on the, the rushes and wanted to find an in and an out on a piece of camera or the beginning of a pan or the beginning of a zoo, I'd just start using the front panel, and just found it so much more effective than that. So 
had a solution to the problem in the end. It wasn't as perfect to say, I love that, because I didn't have to think. This was like a steam bag. It was just that, you know, you didn't... It's your hands you were there. Used to, you just, I want to go backwards. You just, <clears throat> you, you could just do it. You it's, didn't have to sort of think... What you got used to. I've got to press that button to, to return to the player or whatever, and then I've got to press the shuttle, then I've got to set the speed up. Yeah. No, I... As you say about steam I bag, I did... definitely I, affection for that. I thought steam bag... I know this is not to do with tape to tape, but steam bag... I found awkward to cut on. I much prefer the pixing. Oh, yes. I mean, we're going back. To yes, I know we shouldn't go there, but it, basically it's whatever equipment you're most yeah. comfortable and quickest with. Yes, but the steam bag was, was a, a pretty perfect thing for marking it film up. It was great, you, but it was... You know, but yes, you would, it, uh, you would assemble yeah. stuff on a pixie, yeah. yes. I mean, of course, the other, the other joy of this, you, you didn't have to keep standing up and going to no, the seat. No, no, you can sit down. sit down. You could stay seated. I'm not sure it was good for... For the growth of these things in yeah, the end. Yeah, but the directors would never let you stand up then, so you always had to go and get a cup of tea or something. Yes. Otherwise, oh. you were always staring at the monitor. Sadly, we in the BBC, we still were given assistants who would theoretically yeah. go and get sort of cups of tea, so we didn't <laughs> even get that time. Well, it was to a good break. excuse, wasn't yes. it? Oh, sorry, I've got to get up and go. Um, BB, right, so this is a Sony BVU 850P. Now, that, I thought well, P were usually meant. Player, but they're both no but it's got record buttons so it's not and this is a i think these are about there was just a player wasn't it's it to make it cheaper. i can't remember these 20 minute 20 minute tapes these these and this is a umatic sp this is not a standard umatic yes sp this is the the, the highest quality umatic this is the first tape that the bbc could we considered that was of a sufficient quality to transmit. Um, and so normally we would be given a record machine and a play only machine, but I noticed that these are two, two record machines. Um, but the front panel, we really wouldn't use the front panel basically because you control all the functions from here. So anyway, you just pop a tape in like that. Make sure it was in remote. Where would the remote be? There we go. Make sure it was in remote. Um, also, if it was a recorder, make sure that the input would be on dub, which will give you the better quality transfer. Um, then there would be there would be the ability to, to to select which sound channel to be recording to. But of course, we would be controlling that from from the mixer. Um, and of course, actually, you could use this whole front panel to do editing on. You, don't, you wouldn't need that, but we'd never use it like that. But when I used to work on location, particularly with the Beta SP machines, I would actually use the front panel to do all the editing. But there's only one problem with the front panel. You only had, a need, you only could only store one edit. I, if you did an edit and then went to another edit and think, no, actually, I really want to go back and change the previous edit, I think that's as far as you could go. You couldn't go back, like on these, you've got up to 128 edits stored, so you can wind back and think, oh, this, is, this, this, this sequence isn't working. I want to go back and start remaking the edits. You could do that on that. And that, even though I think that had a thousand edits, sorry, the beta SP, but this, no, it was just that's it. You did an edit and that was basically it. Um, and so really, we just set up our audio levels and we would have a separate mixer and and that would be it. Once it was set up, we, all the functions would really be done from the edit controller. S sadly, this is not quite doing what I want it to do, but basically, so edit controller, and what I loved about it was that you had a separate knob, control shuttle and jog for the record machine, and a separate shuttle and, and jog for the player machine. And I think on this one, not that we ever ha had a separate, when we were using Umatic, I would never had the good fortune to have two players, but you also can have two players and you can select between player one and player two. But when I used it, we only just had the one player. It wasn't until we moved on later on into beta SP that sometimes we could have two players. Um, so very basically, you would play and shuttle through your tape until you found the relevant point. Sadly, at the moment, we've got a slight problem with this tape and it's not really wanting to show us. Um, it's actually it's actually going into a shuttle mode for some reason. Give me a second. 
whenever I hit play. It's running very fast. It's not basically anyway. I would find an endpoint, pause it, and I would then hold down the entry button and then press press the relevant player in. Then I would then play further forward till I found what I thought was a suitable out point, press pause, press the entry button and press player out. So I would now have a player in marked in and a player out marked in. And I would then go over to my recorder, find the point where I'd like to add this new shot onto the shot that I've already got recorded. Say I wanted to come down there at the end of that pan up, pause it there and I'd then hold down the entry bar and then press recorder in. Sadly, it's not working on this system at the moment. Then once I'd done that, I could press the preview button and it would then wind back however many seconds I set on the uh, pre-roll time, wind forward and I'd watch the record monitor and at the appropriate point, it would then cut over, not actually making the edit because it's a, a preview to wherever I'd select on the, on the player button. So if, if I was well, if I was happy with that, then I would just, it would be flashing at me. I could then go into auto edit and it would then actually do the edit um, and record my selection onto the record, ta record tape. Basically on, on this system, we just have one player and one recorder, whichever way round it is. And we'd have a monitor for the player and a monitor for the, re for the recorder tape. Um, and that's how... In when, when, when I used to use Umatic SP, that would be our setup. We'd also have, importantly, um, something which of course you couldn't do with film when you're editing, you couldn't control the levels, well you could do on the Steenbeck volume knob, but basically that wasn't something that was fixed. If you f did a fade, that was just a fade you did in passing. But you now, as you were recording your sound over whenever you selected the sound channels, etc., you could actually control the level of the sound, and you had a PPM, uh, to do that. So that was that be something else and you'd also have to select on 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 here you've got the option to do all video and two audio tracks you only had two audio tracks or you could turn any one of off them off or on so you could just record a bit of audio only or you could just record a bit of video only um, and you had that, that ch choice as a film editor sound and picture work very, very infrequently kept together in sync. They were obviously someone's talking, you'd have them talking. But as soon as you possibly could, you'd want to get them out of vision so you could get in there, cut out the ums and ers, the repeats, etc. And so you would want to do separate sound. And another thing I liked about this, and that one has it too, and I think there was a way you could do it on the front. It has a separate audio in. So you can actually define on there your where you want to edit over to, but on the player, you could set your point where you'd want to cut to in picture, but you could then have a separate audio in, i.e. the audio could start earlier or it could be delayed. And you, so you have a separate set in button. It's coming up with an error because I'm obviously not in a very sensible place for it. Um, so you could start, start off if you were coming from a pan and you're gonna to cut to someone in vision, you could start off there dialogue, the words, out of vision, early, and then cut them in vision and set it up on one, set it up on, on, on one edit. I'd wind it back, find the beginning of the bit of voiceover that I'd wanted, and I would then hold the entry button and press the audio <coughs> in. And you can see it actually, sorry, it actually shows with a little arrow that I've set an audio in ahead of the actual video player in point. And similarly, if I wanted to delay it, it would put, have the arrow coming up after. And um, I think that that's also possible. I'm not sure about these, but it's also, you can even do it, there's a way you can do it on the, um, uh, sorry, I'm gonna go. You can do it on these as well, somehow or other. There was some clever way you could do it actually on the front panels. I know you could obviously do it on, on, on the 900 as well. Um, so, Yes, there was an initial cost, and there was again that was the problem also with these. Why initially, when we had beaters, we weren't given two machines because 
you'd have the record machine and the play machine was much smaller but and therefore well, cheaper. When we first went over to, <coughs> to, to Beta SP and we were still you, having pneumatic tapes, our, our edit suite actually would consist of a, a Beta recorder and a Beta player and a pneumatic player because we had to have a Beta player because obviously, well one, they were starting to shoot on Beta, but obviously if you created a, an assembly of shots and it's on beta, now you wanted to go another generation. Well, you need a beta player to actually put that into to be able to then copy over that and create a next generation. So yes, it was, it was expensive stuff. Um, and it's like Avid was initially when it finally came in, that was very expensive. Um, the other, sorry. But, but, but of course the cost, the cost of shooting was, was made the difference yeah. though. The fact you're shooting on a, something that was cheap compared with film.